I do want to say that I have a video before this that I released that covers the bannings superficially, and I kind of celebrate wilderness reclamation being banned, um, and also cauldron familiar. But let's get into the bannings and the explanation by wizards. Okay, everybody, so we're, we're going to go over the bannings. Um, multiple bannings happen in standard, pioneer, historic, brawl. We're going to give we're going to go over the reasons why wizards gave for the bannings. Now, I do want to say this. We're going to go over that for the first portion of the video. The last portion, we're going to talk about some of the, um, maybe some of the consequences financially for physical players um, when bannings happen. I'll go over some of that in detail. Um, for a great example, people lose a lot of money. Um, so the second thing is, what I want to say, is that the team of reclamation in detail, I'm not going to be able to cover that in this video because there's so much to cover. So many cards banned. So wilderness reclamation... Wilderness Reclamation, officially banned in standard. Gross Spiral is banned. Tefiri Time Raveler is banned. Cauldron Familiar is banned. That's in standard. Okay. So first off, Wilderness Reclamation, we all know that needed to go. Now, to me, Gross Spiral and Tefiri Time Raveler, honestly, I never... This kills Bant Ramp. This kills Bant this just kills it so again financially if you spent money on shatter the sky you spent money on uh, Shocklands for that particular deck i don't know how much that deck costs i don't play that deck in standard i have one to fury uh time raveler in real life that's for modern i have one copy for a sideboard but honestly um <sighs> that's tough these are the two ones i didn't think I, I i didn't see coming gross spiral because now you're you're gonna allow aggro decks, right? There's no, t I don't know what the meta is gonna be, but to me, upon playtesting, I saw Radicos three times in a row. I saw Red deck wins twice in a row, and I saw one Saltai deck, and then I saw a Mardu Knights deck. That's what I saw so far. And um, you need a mid range to me, aggro and control decks. Okay, when I mean control, I don't mean wilderness reclamation. Okay, so, and then in Pioneer, you have Inverter of Truth, which is an Aldrazi. You have Kethis, an M20 card, consequently, so a standard card banned in Pioneer. Legendary spells you cast cost one less to cast. Exile two legendary cards from your graveyard. Until end of turn, each legendary card in your graveyard gains, you may play cards from your graveyard. Um, walking Ballista. I, I said this several months ago. Walking Ballista with Holoid Sun Crown. So Walking Ballista states when it enters about it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Put a plus one plus one counter on Walking Ballista. If you pay four, remove a one one counter from Walking Ballista for no mana whatsoever. It deals one damage to any target. So when you have Holoid Sun Crown and Walking Ballista on the battlefield. You deal one damage to an opponent. You give it a uh, lifelink. It'll get a plus one, plus one counter. You have an infinite combo. I said this several months ago in a video. Go look at it. I said it will be banned, mo more than likely. Um, Underworld Breach. That card is banned. It's from Theros Beyond Death. It's banned in Pioneer, of course, um, in other formats as well. So that's been banned. Historic Wilderness Reclamation in Tefiri Time Raveler, they're suspended, so they're technically not banned, but you they're they're just waiting and seeing how the format shakes up. In Brawl, Tefiri Time Raveler is banned. So let's go back, let's go and see what this is all about. Okay. It says in the last banned and restricted list update, we chose not to make any changes as standard. At the time, the environment has seen just seen the results of the player's tours 3 and 4. The companion rules change was recent, and Core Set 2021 had just entered the format. While we saw new decks emerging, ultimately, the top decks were able to adapt and retain their metagame share. So let me just say this. Um, in the Red Bull that I played in, Teamer Reclamation had a 55 Point three percent or fifty five point six percent win rate. Okay, it was the most played deck, and we saw that in the Star City. So I think we saw this coming, right? Even with fires in the format, Teamer Reclamation still placed in the top four. Sometimes taking number two and number one. 
Okay, so after watching the environment progress for several weeks and reviewing the deck list entries for the Pro Players Tour Final. So this is really falling on the Players Tour Finals, which just took place, by the way. We've decided to make changes to shake up the metagame. This set of changes is a deviation from our usual band list philosophy for standard, and as such, we consider it an experiment. Outside of the very top levels of competitive play, including throughout most of MTG Arena traditional standard ladder, we're seeing a good distribution of deck diversity and win rates. However, at the skill level of our most competitive tournaments in the mythic ranking on the arena ladder, which is where I play at, we do see a small number of decks with high win rates. I already discussed that. Wilderness Reclamation, Wilderness Reclamation, Wilderness Reclamation and play rates that have remained in the metagame position for quite some time. I've already said that. All you have to do is play in the tournament or just look at the uh, results. Under our usual approach, we have, we have allowed standard rotation to provide a natural and predictable shift in the metagame with the release of Zendikar Rising. So basically what I'm taking from that is um, they wanted it to hit rotation. They didn't want to make this banning. They wanted everything to drive to rotation, but here's their follow-up and it literally says but <laughs> in an era of social distancing the proportion of standard play occurring on digital platforms has increased substantially as the rate at which players can rack up games of standard in digital is higher than tabletop that's true we believe it's correct to enact metagame change at a faster rate as well i i all i think we all agree with that Therefore, we're making bands targeted at weakening decks that have been strong and popular at the highest level of competitive play. We'll highlight this, the highest level of competitive play. And at some cards and combos that have overstayed their welcome in the eyes of much of the standard community. And to me, that is Cauldron Familiar, is what they're targeting. I'm not putting words in Wizard's mouth, but we can just say that's Cauldron. Ramp decks using Gross Bile together made up 61%, 68% of the day one metagame at the Players Tour final. So again, they're quoting things from the Players Tour. Okay? Finals. And represent approximately 25 to 30% of the metagame at Mythic rank on the MTG Arena ladder. So let me discuss that for a second. Yeah, you have Bant Ramp. So Bant Ramp uses Gross Spiral, you know, with Shattered the Sky. Um, and all that. Then you have Sultai. They use that. Um, Simic Flash uses Grow Spiral. In fact, it heavily relies on Grow Spiral. So yeah, it's going Simic. Uh, yeah, Grow Spiral to me that's that's neither here nor there. It's using a lot of decks. It's like saying an island represents a huge number in uh, blue decks. I mean, that's not a shocker. I mean, it's... All right, so um, Wilderness Reclamation decks have been considered the strongest archetype by much of the competitive community. I wouldn't say that's subjective. I would say that's objective by every metric. Okay, um, making up 54% of the meta game at the... Again, they're reciting the Players Tour Finals and about 15% of the Mythic metagame on Arena. In order to remove Reclamation decks from the most played spot and reduce the metagame share of ramp decks in general, Wilderness Reclamation and Gross Spiral are banned. So they don't give a specific reason for Gross Spiral. They kind of cl clump Gross Spiral and Reclamation together, um, but they don't give a direct response to why Gross Spiral itself is banned, like by itself. You know what I mean? Okay, we'll get to that later. Another archetype that has maintained a high win rate over the long period of time is Black Red or Jun Sacrifice, featuring the Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Combo. In addition to having high overall win weights, these decks put considerable pressure on aggressive and mid-range creature decks. Does mid-range exist anymore? It probably won't now. Uh, further, the number of triggers generated by these decks can be cumbersome for both players and digital play. To weaken these sacrifice strategies, open up more 
meta game diversity and create a more fun environment called from Miller's Band. Okay, so what I'm seeing so far is really quick decks. That's what I'm seeing so far. My Mardu Knights decks can have eight creatures by turn four. If you cannot grow Spiral into a Shatter of the Sky, you're dead. Red deck wins. They can kill you by turn five, can't they? If you if you can't resolve the board. So you need control decks, in my opinion, and mid-range decks to balance out the format. Now, do you need broken decks like Wilderness Reclamation? No. I think they hit a home run by banning this. Wilderness Reclamation. I'm sorry, the whole thing's highlighting. Cauldron Familiar? Okay. Finally, we'll also be removing Teferi Time Rattler from the environment. We've often heard the feedback from the repetitive play patterns and reduced capability for interaction that Teferi Time Rattler can create an impressive and, and limiting. So time, time limit. Um, while we consider banning Teferi Time Rattler and pass updates, one reason we didn't was evidence that it was helping hold Wilderness Reclamation decks in check. That's true. With Wilderness Reclamation leaving the environment, we feel it's also time for the standard metagame to move on with Teferi Time Raveler. We can also say the same thing for Winota then, right? I mean, Winota can also kill you by turn 4. So now you have Red Deck Winds that can kill you turn 5. Mardu that can kill you turn 4, turn 5. Um, Like, how how can you how is there mid range in the format? My opinion, like how how do you have what what mid what mid range can exist? Grow spiral fed some type of mid range. I don't know. So anyway, we note that grow spiral Rodolus reclamation to free time rally were already slated to rotate this fall with the release of Zendikar Rising. With that in mind, we view this as a set of change as early rotation for those cards to help freshen up. I, I, I agree. Something needed to be done with the standard format. In the case of Cauldron Familiar, we're taking the opportunity to not only improve the metagame in the short term, but also improve the balance risk uh, pattern in the next year. Now, notice with Winota, they took the same stance, right? With Winota, um, when Agent of Treachery and Fires got banned, and Winota got banned in Historic. They almost said the same sentence about Winota. That in future sets, Agent of Treachery and Winota were going to get worse. I'm paraphrasing. Okay. We emphasize that these changes are, to a large degree, a product of times and the current focus on digital play. So again, this is not. So again, I, I feel for the people that financially spent the money. But this is, uh, again, they keep on bringing up the, the Pro Tour Finals. They keep on bringing up digital play. Like, it's repetitive, right? And when you see re repetition, it's a pattern. Okay. We look forward to hearing from the community feedback as we approach, and we'll continue to keep an eye on the metagame going forward. It's going to be aggro. Yeah. I... Um... With the last, so this is a pioneer. We we just got through standard. Okay, so I'm gonna read this really quick. With the last ban and restricted list update, we chose to unban Oath of Nisa. Okay, Oath of Nisa is kind of like a once upon a time card. Um, and I can't really highlight that because it's not allowing me to do that. Um, so this wasn't introduced. To, this was introduced to. This was intended to be a major update to, to the format as an alternative to other changes, but rather what we viewed as a relatively safe unbanned. Okay, so I'm going to skip all this kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to get to the like meat and potatoes of this. Okay, while the reduction in tabletop tournaments due to the need for social distancing shortly after Pioneer's launch earlier this year is certainly a factor, we've also seen a decline in pi Pioneer play rates on Magic Online throughout the course of the year. Let me pause for that for a second. If you have a lot of bannings in a, in a very new format, people are going to be nervous to invest their money in play. That just makes sense. Um, if you went to college and you were taking uh, four classes in college, so four classes, four three credits, like full time. And they were to ban one of the books that you use for your class. But they still said, hey, you need, you still need to take your class. 
you would ultimately do bad in that class, wouldn't you? You wouldn't feel comfortable taking that class at that university again, would you? No, because you don't know what books are going to be banned. when they're, um, The class will still exist, but you don't know what book's going to be banned. So you're going to say, oh, well, I'm not going to buy a book for the class. Why would I do that? It's, it might be banned next month or the next week or the next day. I don't know. People like security. It's clear that many players who have been or could be interested in Pioneer are ready to, for a change. Ultimately, how much fun players are having within the environment is the most important driving force being with behind BNR updates. And so we're choosing to ban four cards to shake things up and push the competitive metagame away from combo decks. Now, I will agree with that statement. I, I said in my live stream, standard felt like a gimmick. I said every deck that you play is a combo deck. Rotting Registrar with Demonic Embrace, that new enchantment that gives plus three, plus one, is a combo. Witches Oven and Cauldron Familiar, combo. Reclamation, combo. Fires of Intervention, combo. Winota, a combo deck. All you need is Winota and non-human creatures. You win the game. Game's yours. You got it. And I was doing a live stream like for ten hours, and I was I was like, guys, every state. It felt like every deck is is a is a gimmick or a combo deck. It gets me back to this. These bands are primarily aimed at disrupting Inverter of Truth. So this has uh, flying. It's a six six for for four. <laughs> When it enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your library face down, then shuffle all the cards from your graveyard to your, into your library. Okay. Underworld Breach. <clears throat> Haloid Sun Crowned. And this goes back to what I was saying originally. As long as your devotion... Okay, so f read the, the middle paragraph of Haloid Sun Crown. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. Ah, but pay two, another target creature gains lifelink. Walking Ballista. Remove a plus one, plus one counter from Walking Ballista. It deals one damage to any target. So all you have to do is drop down Walking Ballista, uh, like turn two, turn three, drop down Haloid Sun Crown, give this lifelink, and you win the game. Because you deal one damage, you gain one life, you get a plus one, plus one counter. You deal another damage. You gain one life. It's infinite damage. <laughs> or infinite life gain, however you want to view it. And Keithis, and, uh, Keithis the uh, Hidden Hand combo decks. Okay, I already went over all that, all right? Um, it says, Kethis decks are currently among the top 5-0 trophy winners in Magic Online Pioneer Leagues, despite being a modest portion of the field. So... What does Magic Online mean? It means MTGO. So there's MTGO. Let me bring out my note. So what do we see? So there's MTGO. MTGO. Okay. And that is Magic Online. And that is online. And that's primarily used for modern and pioneer. Plus legacy um plus vintage okay it has a currency system in the form of tickets okay each ticket cost one dollar so you can enter tournaments for 12 tickets which equals $12. Um, you can get into Pro Tour qualifiers for, I believe, 30 tickets, which thus equals $30. Standard is now... MTG Arena 
your local game store, and limited on MTGO by the players. Players are not really playing on that format for that, okay? So when they're collecting their metadata and they're using the word magic online, MTGO, okay? I don't know if you can kind of see that. When they're grabbing their metadata, um, that's the referring to this right here, okay? This is what they're referring to. Does that kind of like help out? Does that kind of like, you know, make a little sense? Okay. All right. So therefore we're choosing to ban inverter of the truth and underworld breach. Well, you can see the problem there, right? Underworld breach says each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the car, the, the cards mana cost plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. Well, if you're putting your all your cards from your library face down and then shuffling all cards from your graveyard into your library, in this states, each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape's cost. <laughs> like, all right, so Walking Blissa and Kithis. Okay, so we got it, right? Our tenants to dramatically introduce instances where players will risk losing to a combo kill when tapping out. And I agree. So th that's that's like Fires of Intervention, Wilderness Reclamation, the same thing that was happening in Standards happening in Pioneer. Just worse because there's more powerful cards in Pioneer. They should open up the field for more traditional mid-range and control decks and put less pressure on aggressive decks and also focus on hand disruption and counter spells. We did consider several other cards as alternative bands um, aimed at the same decks. Thassa's Oracle, which is that one, again, Theros Beyond Death card. Uh, where it enters the battlefield, you look at the top X cards, and basically, if you look through all the cards um, through your library, you, you win the game. And you look at the cards th because you're devotional blue. Okay. However, inverter decks are also in ca are still capable of winning with Jace Wilderness of Mysteries alone. And this, of course, is when if you draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game. Well. If you're putting your, if you're exiling your library and you bring down Jace of Mysteries, you're going to win the game, right? Or you fast as, or so I understand this, okay? So we're not going to read through all this um, because it's just going to be a long thing. But I do want to say this in closing because this is like their closing statement. We understand that this re represents a large change to the pioneer environment, and frankly. That's the intent. While we're past the phase of frequent weekly updates to Pioneer, we're still in a period where changes are necessary to help shape the format in its initial launch year. And quite personally, I think that's the reason why people are scared to play Pioneer, because they don't know what's going to be banned. We want to ensure that Pioneer can deliver an enjoyable play experience to players who are looking for an accessible, non-rotating format that's closer to standard and power level and offers a variety of archetypes and decks to choose from. We're dedicated to actively supporting the Pioneer and will continue to incorporate both data and community feedback. Well, this is a part of the community feedback. And guys, please, in the comment section, give your feedback. Historic. Do you see why I can't cover Team of Reclamation with you in this video? I promised that I was going to do that in the last video, um, and it just didn't work. Uh, it's not going to work. Okay, historic. The historic beta game is moving quickly right now. The addition of new cards through Jumpstart is having a large impact, as well as Om Omniket Remastered when it arrives soon, so that's yet to be there. There are many of these new decks we are watching closely, but our strong preference in times like this is to give the meta time to develop naturally. We want to see which of these new decks turn out to show enduring strength versus merely making an initial splash. That said... There are two places we feel that we have enough information, based upon standard, really, that we should take action. Wilderness Reclamation to Furry Time Raveler. We touched on Wilderness Reclamation in our last band. I'm not going to cover that. And we all remember Field of the Dead being banned. Okay, so do we remember all these bannings. I even forget that Field of the Dead was banned. There's been so many bannings in the last year, we just forget 
all the bannings. It says for for for, for, for Fury Time Raveler, we get much the same feedback in historic that we get in standard. In historic, we also find that the power of the reduced capability for in the interaction of Teferi Time Raveler brings scales with the power of the interaction he's preventing in the board he's consequently protecting. Bring scales with the power. Are they talking about hardened scales? I don't know. Anyway, he's all... But we'll skip that. He's also seen very frequently in historic, appearing in over 20% of the best of three games in significant percentages in other modes as well. For these reasons, we are suspending to Fury Time Ravel in historic. As with all suspensions, we're closely monitoring the impact of this. Brawl, okay, I guess Brawl, if like you're going to have to Fury Time Raveler as your commander or your. I don't play Brawl, but I can see that. So that's self explanatory, right? Okay, last paragraph. <laughs> okay, it says, On announcement timing and effective date. In the past, we've given a one-week advance notice for updates to be banned and restricted list. Because of the increased focus on digital play, again, this pops up in about every other paragraph, digital play. So again, if you're a physical player and you're buying the physical cards, I, I, I feel bad. Because it's not just the cards that are banned. It's the cards that interact with the cards. They, they lose value. Great instance. Faithless Looting got banned last year. A 25 cent common. Read that card. Faithless Looting. Well, Arc Like Phoenix. Read that card. If you cast three or more instant or sorcery spells... Um, bring it from your graveyard to the battlefield. It went from a $30 card, Arc Like Phoenix, to a $15 card. Surgical Extraction. Read that. You can remove a card from a graveyard, exile it, look through their deck. That went from $50, bucks, 3 months later, down to $20. $20. So you see, it's not just the card that gets banned, but it's the cards that interact with that card or deal with that card. They lose value. Like, remember when Oko, Once Upon a Time, and Veil vale Summer got banned? If you own those in physical play, Veil vale Summer was a $5 uncommon and went down to 3 bucks. Oko went from 50 to 20 Once Upon a Time went from 18 six dollars so like when fires of intervention got banned cavalier of flames went from an, an eight dollar card now it's four dollars so it's the other card so again i understand everything's about digital but i also want to give respect to the physical players spending money because i feel they don't have a voice you don't have a voice right now because a lot of people are playing digital. We know what's going on with the world, but I want to give you that voice. I want to give you that voice. I'm making an argument for you right now about the bannings. But also in retrospect, there are some cards that were very damaging to formats. And we can have a discussion and I'd be glad to have that discussion in the comment section and what you guys think. What do you think that can be done? Guys, from an MTG Arena perspective, when you lose, when something gets banned, you get your wild cards back. In real life, you get nothing back. You buy a $100 booster box, you open it, you, you pull an Oko, now, you know, back in Aldrain. I mean, it's rough. My solution is lower the combo decks, like Winota. Like, all these are four drops. Winota, Wilderness Reclamation, Fires. Like, just stop with the four drop thing. Where people are getting creatures for free, mana for free. Like, that needs to just go. Standard doesn't have the accessories to deal with cards like that. Cards 
Now, cards like that in modern, they're too slow. A four, a four drop enchantment in modern, that's way too slow. Okay? Like, I have a four color mill deck, four color mill. I could kill you by turn five. If you're dropping an enchantment on turn four, <laughs> you're dead. It's, you know, it's over. I got you. But. So modern has the firepower. But standard, they don't have the firepower for all these combos. And I, I respect Wizards' decision on digital play. They want to grow MTG Arena. Again, this is not the opinion of Wizards. This is even not my opinion. I'm making an argument. Because I feel that the other side is not being told. So I'm, I'm kind of playing the devil's advocate here, right? I'm being Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Wilderness Re Reclamation, in my opinion, oh, that's my opinion. It needed to go. I agree with Wizards on that. Cauldron Familiar, <laughs> I can live with. It's annoying as crap. The games take forever. Um, But you know what? Magic is a game of patience as well. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad to see it go. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but Fury, I play... Guys, you know I don't play with top 8 decks. I take decks that are good... Like, Gruel. I can build any deck on MTG Arena. I have the Teamer Rec deck. I did not play with it. Fires. I, I could have built the Fires deck. I had every card for it. I didn't play with it. Winota. I just crafted just to see what the fuss was about. I didn't like how it played. It felt like a gimmick deck. Winota feels like a gimmick deck. If you don't cheat out Loxodon, like two of them, uh, by turn three or turn four, or drop down Winota by turn four, your opponent your opponent wins. But if you drop those things down, you win. <laughs> it's just like, so to me, I didn't like playing with it, and I don't like playing against it. Now, that's me personally. But, so, what I'm trying to say is, not one time did I play versus, I, Tefiri Time Raveler to me was a nuisance. I'm like, oh, gosh, dang it. They're going to minus three it. Then I, I'm going to have to send one creature this way and kill the Tefiri, and then one their way and kill them or, or hit them for damage. But the no means that I feel like that I played versus Tefiri Time Raveler and it changed the game like Fires or Wilderness. I don't, I don't think decks are built around Tefiri. I think Tefiri is just an accessory piece, right? But nonetheless, um, you know, Gross Spiral, I think, I, I'm, I'm going to disagree with that banning because you have to have control decks. You have to have Bant Ramp because Bant Ramp is a control deck. It board wipes. So that stops red deck wins. Mardu Knights. Radcoast Aggro. It stops it. But now, since Bant Control is gone, it's, it's dismantled. Sultai took a big blow. So, you take that part of the piece from the control decks, until rotation hits, you have some nasty aggro creatures. Rotting Registrar of 7-6 on turn 3. Especially if they go first. Because their turn three is your turn two. That's where Gross Spiral really helped. So yes, I think Wilderness Reclamation was the right call. But I, I think Gross Spiral was a reach on this one. I think they could have avoided Gross Spiral. I think Gross Spiral is actually kind of needed to balance out, to help control decks. To help balance out aggro decks. And maybe with Gross Spiral... And getting rid of Wilderness Reclamation, if you had Gross Spiral in the format, mid-range starts to come back. Can you can you name me a mid-range deck right now? You, you can't, can you? Okay. It says, so their crease focus on digital play. We're choosing to forgo that advance notice and roll out these changes as soon as possible. 
This isn't necessarily indicative of how we'll announce and implement in the future. I agree with that. I, I trust them on that. And we're continuing to look at how we balance giving players advance notice versus staying agile. But guys, I said this in my live stream. The, I said, if there's going to be a ban, because I, I, I did a live stream and you can look at it. I did a live stream. It's called Hunting for Fires of Intervention. Hunting for Fires of Intervention. And I did the same thing for Wilderness Reclamation. And in my live stream with Wilderness Reclamation, I said, if they're going to ban Reclamation, they're going to do it after the, after a week after the Pro Tour. They won't do it before the Pro Tour. I said, but they'll do it a week after. People in my live stream know I said that. You go look at that. Because I, I was playing versus Team or Rec constantly. So I created a series hunting for Team or Reclamation. Just like I did hunting for fires. I would live stream, go look for the decks, play versus the decks, improve my deck to beat those decks, and go and just single, just go after the, just go, just go right after it. Now that's my mentality as a player. That's why I play with uh, Gruel. <laughs> that's why in the Red Bull I played in Gruel. By the way, my red my uh, my uh, Gruel deck was published on MTG Goldfish. I finished in the top ten percent in both Red Bull qualifiers. Now, if I would have played with Team or Rec, I probably would have placed a lot higher than the top ten percent. But I chose not to play with those decks. I chose to play with decks that. I enjoy that I, 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 I just wanted to push for, for as far as I could. And I believe I accomplished those goals. Um, but anyway, guys, that's the whole thing. As far as the um, cost situation, again, I, I, I don't know what to say financially if you've invested. Um, obviously, the focus on this one is in digital play. But I do want to give the physical players a voice and hopefully the online players give them an understanding of how that impacts the physical play. Um, the financial losses. If you spent 500 bucks or 300 bucks on a deck and it's now been uh, tore apart, um, like Bant. I didn't see that one coming. I thought Bant is a necessary evil. I'm not even a Bant player. I thought it was a necessary evil. Okay, I did play with Bant. I did play an orange, uh, an orange uh, arena member, a team member, and I beat them. They were playing with, with Jazaki Fires of Intervention when Fires was like the big thing, and I played with Bant, and I beat them on turn sixteen. On turn sixteen. But I'm not really a Bant player in real life and on MTG Online. So I have no dog in the fight. But I do understand that there's necessary evils. You do need board wipes. You don't need a thousand board wipes. But that controls aggro. And if you control aggro, then mid-range can start to appear. I think Team or Rec was in fires were preventing mid-range decks. They were preventing them. Well, we already got rid of fires. I think what we needed to do was just get rid of Wilderness Reclamation... And maybe just leave Grow Spiral alone and let Bant ramp without Tefuri still be a deck and, and control aggro just a little bit. And Sultai control aggro just a little bit so it doesn't get out of hand. So far, as of August 3rd in Diamond League, so pretty much everybody that's in Diamond League in August 3rd are pretty much former Mythic players because everything resets every month. I saw Radkos three back-to-back -back games. Then I saw Red Deck wins. Then I saw Soul Tie. Then we went right back to the aggro decks. So then I switched my deck to Mardu Knights. My opponent quit. Because like I told you, with Mardu Knights, by turn four, I can have eight creatures on that battlefield. And then I played the mirror match, my very next game. And that's when I said, okay, I see where the format's going. It's all aggro. For the most part. I think Saltai has a chance. But a turn three cultivate isn't going to do it. A turn three euro 
is it going to help your board wipes? Anyway, that is it. I made an argument. It doesn't mean I agree with all the arguments in this video. I just wanted to give you all a voice that is not heard. I'm a physical player myself. I have several invites. I have a Pro Tour invite that I'll be playing at. I play in Modern. I play in Standard. So trust me. I don't take bannings lightly. I do have a funny video, though. So go check it out. Anyway, guys, feel free to subscribe. Until next video, I'll see you soon.